Hey everybody, it's John Graham. Uh, Phil Vogels, as uh, many of you might have known, has asked several of us, or many of us actually, that have uh, opened up our practices already, just to give a, a two minute uh, little summary of uh, the things that have uh, transpired, how it's gone, yeah, things that we're doing and things we could do better. And so I just wanna give you a quick rundown um, how, how it's gone. So we opened yesterday and normally I'm open on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So we're doing five days a week now. We're open from nine to five. We normally see about 65 to 75 patients a day. And we've paired that back to 30 a day uh, so that we've got ample time for uh, sterilization procedures between patients. Uh, we are actually seeing, Mark, like most of you would plan on doing, we're seating our patients every other clinic chair, one of the reasons that we need to also pare down the number that we see during the day. Uh, and uh, we've obviously got our, our protection um, policies in place and our PPE uh, that we're wearing. And I'll just run through a couple of those. Like many of you, we're having our patients wait in the parking lot and they text us when they arrive at the practice uh, or call us. And we have actually got uh, Two, two assistants seeing every patient. One of them is the primary assistant that's doing the treatment for that day uh, in the column. And then the other person is uh, what we're referring to as a patient wellness coordinator. That is, a, is, a, is an assistant that's not actively seeing patients that day, but is the assistant to the uh, team member that's actually seeing patients. They will be the ones that are responsible for going down to the parking lot and they uh, get the patient to let the parent know that, uh, and I sent all this out in a, in a, in a letter, and if you're interested in that letter, I, I, I shared it on, on um, a couple of social media sites, uh, including my own Facebook page. Uh, but if any of you are interested in my letter, you're welcome to, uh, to it. I think it's posted as well uh, on some Facebook spots, but, uh, or excuse me, on some, uh, yeah, on some Facebook pages, but you're welcome just to email me directly if you would like and I'll send it to you. Uh, when the patients come in, we have a landing. When they walk in and go up the stairs, there's a fairly large landing that you, uh, you uh, traverse to get to the second set of stairs up to our office. On that landing, we have a table that I've set up and on the table, we've got a uh, contact-free thermometer. Uh, we also have a questionnaire. It's five questions, it's very straightforward. Basically, the questions are, uh, have you been in contact with anybody with COVID-19 in the last 14 days? Have you had a fever? Have you had a dry cough? Uh, have you been generally feeling ill? Um, or have you been diagnosed with COVID-19 uh, in the last 14 days? Uh, those, I think those are the questions uh, that we ask. And we, uh, any of those yes that are answered yes are probably going to be turned away for 14 days, but I, uh, I have asked my staff to let me see the questions and go speak with the patient prior to making that decision. We've only been open two days now, but we haven't had a single person that's been denied entry because of positive answers to those questions. Um, after they answer the questions and they've taken their temperature and they're fine, the patient wellness coordinator uh, escorts them to what formerly was the toothbrushing station. We've converted that into a hand washing station so they will wash their hands. Uh, we've also asked that they arrive with masks. Uh, and surprisingly, uh, over the last two days, I think we've had three patients that didn't have masks. We have plenty of them for them. If they don't have them, we're not advertising that we do. Uh, and they're cloth masks. They're not uh, regular protective masks for procedures. Uh, but we've only had three that did not show up with masks. So they've been very responsible in coming in with a mask. Um, after they've washed their hands, they have a seat at the chair and we have them rinse with a uh, peroc hydrogen peroxide mix uh, for 30 seconds. We have them, we've pre-poured it into a Dixie cup. We have them rinse and then we have them spit it back out into the Dixie cup. And as soon as they do that, then the uh, team member that's seeing the patient will suction it out with the uh, suction uh, just so there's no splashing involved. This is the stuff that I use and it is, uh, product placement time and it's backwards so you're gonna to have to read backwards but essentially it's Colgate optic white advanced whitening and it has 30% hydrogen peroxide the recommendation is one is uh, or excuse me three not 30% 3% hydrogen peroxide the recommendation is 1.5% so this is double it tastes nice I've only had one patient refuse to use it and it was because he didn't want to rinse with anything that had fluoride in it and 
That surprised me a little bit, uh, but that was fine. So we just gave him a, a mixture of our own hydrogen peroxide and water, and he was fine with that. After they've rinsed and, and spit it back into the cup, they're ready to be seen. If the, and of course, as far as we're, we're all wearing smocks, uh, we're not wearing disposable gowns. We are wearing smocks uh, and that are buttoned all the way up to the neck. And at the end of the day, as long as they've remained clean and not don't have any um, bodily fluids on them, which we haven't had any yet, because we're being very cautious and we're not doing anything too invasive at the moment. Uh, at the end of the day, with those smocks, what we do, and we've also had our staff members come with an extra pair of shoes that they leave at the bottom of the staff stairwell. And uh, so they come in with the shoes that they wore home and they came to. Uh, work in and they switch their shoes out just like they would if they were muddy in the winter time uh, to the shoes that they wear in the clinic so that they don't take those shoes home and the end of the day I provide trash bags for all of the staff they take their uh, smocks and put them in the trash bags for cleaning and then the bags are thrown away after each use uh, and then they have a fresh smock every day that they wear uh, they're wearing a mask they're we wearing an n95 or equivalent and uh, what I mean by an equivalent is they're, e they're either wearing an n95 or they're wearing a uh, grade 3 surgical mask which is the same effectiveness it's not as hot it's not as claustrophobic so most of them are choosing to do that unless they're going to be doing a debond or something that is going to create a fair amount of aerosol then they will wear the n95 that's not a choice and they'll wear a regular mask over the top of that mask and that and in those instances they'll also wear a face shield um, but they're not wearing a face shield if they're not doing a procedure that is actually going to generate um, an aerosol, for example, if they're just checking an Invisalign patient or whatnot, then they'll just wear a regular mask, you know, a, a, a grade three mask and uh, eye protection always. I do have a plexiglass separator that I've put up at the front desk check-in, and uh, if they do that, and then those staff members wear masks, they pull their mask down when they're making phone calls so that they're audible. Uh, but because they have that uh, screen and because we don't ever have more than maybe five patients in the office at a time, we also are seeing consults, but um, with any patient, they're, they must come in alone unless they're a small child and they're, they're allowed to come in with one caregiver. Uh, so I would say 85% of our patients come in alone. Uh, we've even had some nine and 10 year olds whose parents wait in the parking lot. And I'm gonna just, uh, in a word, it has been glorious. It's quiet. There are no small children running around touching everything and licking uh, instruments and chairs and you know everything so it's pretty good a couple of other things um covid19 the sars cov2 virus uh is very um labile uh, when it's exposed to uvc rays solar rays and in fact direct radiation by solar rays and i've cited this in a, in a study a lot of different places, but dies in 90 seconds to two, two, two minutes. Um, if they're not in direct sun, they'll still die much quicker uh, than, than we've you know been accustomed to hearing. And so we have suction cups that we've affixed to windows. Uh, for those of you who've seen my office, and you can check out what my office looks like if you go to grahamortho.com. Um, but I have a lot of windows in my office, and so we just put those on the windows, and then they hang there when they're, when they're taking a break or anything like that. Uh, they will hang their mask uh, on the hooks that are uh, on the window, and they're getting sunlight. Now, those are UV-protected uh, glass treated uh, treated glass, but it still allows 90, or excuse me, it still allows 6% of solar radiation. So, is it uh, is it like it would be if it was in direct sun? No, it's not, but it still is better than just sitting around. Um, we're trying not to throw them away, if, especially if they're uh, the... Uh, the N95 masks because those are in uh, short supply. Uh, after the patient is seen, um, we are, uh, we've allowed 10 minutes between patients to allow for complete disinfection of not only the, uh, the chair, the operative chair, the, uh, there's my dog Penny, um, you know, all of the areas around it, but we also then spend a lot of time um, in, the, uh, in the sterilization room, just kind of double sterilizing everything. Um, uh, those are the practices, those are the procedures. I'll, I'll be very honest with you. Our staff did not start with much trepidation. I think the reason is I, I had talked to them a lot about the science behind the SARS-CoV-2 virus and uh, 
how infectious it is, um, how uh, what 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 one would expect if they were infected with it. Currently in Utah, uh, about 95% of all antibody tests are negative, uh, and that's uh, those are antibody tests. I can't speak to the antigen tests, but the serologic tests for antibodies are 95% negative right now anyway. Uh, that could change any time, but that's what we're understanding uh, at this point in the state. Uh, so they, they were relatively um, confident that they were gonna be just fine. We do check the staff, including myself, we check our temperature twice a day upon arrival, and then right after lunch, we check everybody's temperature as well. And they know that if they feel ill at all, they're expected to not show up at work. Everybody has come, we haven't had a single staff member that's elected not to come to work. And uh, frankly, today was even more relaxed than it was yesterday. I don't mean relaxed in a careless way, I just mean relaxed in that I think the staff is feeling very confident and comfortable that we've got this. And uh, we're fortunate because we've had a lot of great buy-in from the patients. They've been very understanding. And for example, in Invisalign cases, I've explained to them, it might be four to six weeks before we get the trays back because of the wave of patients that uh, Align is gonna be experiencing as, as uh, more and more doctors come online and patients completely understand. We haven't had a single patient so far that has given any resistance or frustration uh, at the sound of uh, the, some of the delays that we may have, even the delays in, in scheduling the next appointments because they understand we're doing everything that we can to protect them and to protect our staff. Anyway, that's been the rundown. It's been actually very good. Uh, I kind of wish that every day from here on out was uh, like these because it's nice to be at a slow pace and uh, not have a, a ton of people in the office, um, feel like you're very under control. And uh, it's been a pleasure to see everybody. They've been really excited to get back into the office to be treated and to resume their treatment. And it's just fun to be amongst, uh, amongst uh, patients and, and my staff again. So if anybody has any questions about anything that uh, we've experienced, uh, we're certainly one of many, many um, offices that have much better ideas than we have. And I'm gonna be looking forward to watching these videos as well, because I think we all have a lot to learn from each other and I'm grateful for the opportunity. I hope you guys, uh, have a great opening experience. I'm looking forward to hearing your experiences and I wish you well. Talk to you later. Bye.